Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 8.5 variation functions. Our first variation of the day is direct variation and it is read y varies directly as x such that y equals kx. This is direct variation right here. This is the equation that you're going to use when you hear, you hear direct. And k is known as the constant of variation. So in all of our functions today, we will need to find k first. We will need to find that constant of variation. So our first problem says y varies directly. And once, when it says directly, we know we're going to use direct variation as x. And y is 22 when x is 11. Then we're asked to find y when x is 3. Well, we do not know what our k is, so we cannot find y. So we have to start here with y is 22 and x is 11. First thing we have to do with these functions is to find k. We're using direct variation, so y equals k times x, where y is 22. We do not know what our k is, but we do know that x is 11. So I just plug that in for my direct variation. Now I'm solving for k. Here I have k equals 2. K equals 2, that's only part of it. Now your equation will go y equals, and now since my k is 2, it's going to be 2 times x. Now we're going to be asked to find y when x is 3. So I'm just going to plug that 3 right in for x. So our equation would go y equals 2 times 3. And so y is 6 for our answer. Just double check to make sure you found the right thing. It said find y. We found y for our answer. Number two, if y varies directly, there's our hint. We're using direct variation as x when y is 12 and y is 12 and x is 4. So again, we're asked to find k. We need to find k first. y equals k times x for direct variation. y is 12, so I'm plugging that Right in for y, we do not know what k is. x is 4, so I plug that in. k is going to be 3 after you divide by 4. Now our equation, when we're asked to find x, is y equals 3 times x. Now we're asked to find x when y is 21. So now I don't know what x is, but I do know that y is 21 equals 3x. Divide by 3, we find that x equals 7 for our answer. And did we find the right thing? Yes, we did. This would be our direct variation equation, and this would be what our x is. Next variation is joint variation. Joint variation, y varies jointly, keyword jointly, as x and z such that y equals kxz. So all it is, it's the same exact thing as direct variation, except you're adding another variable. So again, suppose y varies jointly. Now we know we're going to use joint variation. y equals k times x times z. Now we're asked to find y when x is 10 and z is 5. Hold on a second, we're asked to find y. We have to find k first, so we don't know what our y is. So now we're looking at if y is 12, z is 8, and x is 3. So here we have to use the if statement, just like we did before, it's just in reverse order. So we have y is 12, we do not know what our k is, our x is 3, and our z is 8. Let's simplify this here real quick, where we have 12 equals k times 24. If I solve for k, I'm going to divide by 24, so k equals one half, 12 over 24, which simplifies to one half. So I found my k. Now I'm going to make my joint variation equation where y equals one half times x times z. So now when it says find y, we already know what our k is. So we have a 10 and we have a 5. We do not know what y is because we're finding y one half my x is 10, my z is 5. So you plug this all into your calculator, you come up with y equals 25. Did we find the right thing? Yes, we did, because it says find y. Let's try another one. Now it says suppose r varies jointly. 
jointly keyword using we're going to use joint variation as v and t well what does that mean there's no y x and z in there but it does say r so it's going to be r now equals still going to be k and then now it varies as v and t instead of x and z we're asked to find uh, r when v is 2 and t is 8 if so now we're going to plug in everything after the if statement r is 80 v is 10 we do not know what k is so i plug 10 in for v and t is 4 i'm going to simplify here 80 equals k times 40 divide by 40 so k equals now, my new equation after I write it with k in there, r equals 2 times v t. Now we can go ahead and find r when we have v is 2, t is 8. So we do not know what r is. 2 times v is 2 and t is 8. So now we have r equals... 32 because if you plug it all in your calculator you get r equals 32 last variation of the day is inverse variation inverse variation y varies inversely keyword inversely as x such that now look here real close ladies and gentlemen because when it says inversely x goes to the bottom we now have a fraction and that x goes on the bottom so reading number five if y varies inversely meaning we have to use inverse variation as x and y equals 10 when x is 20 find x when y is 16 well we can't find anything yet because we don't don't know what our k is so we have inverse variation where y equals k over x now we're going to plug our variables in where y equals 10 and x equals 20 so it's 10 equals k over 20. Now what do we do here to get k by itself? Put 10 over 1, cross multiply. So k is going to equal 200 because we have k times 1, which is k, and then 10 times 20, which is 200. So I set up my new equation. y equals 200 over x. Now we are asked to find x when y is 16. So I plug in 16 for y. That equals 200 over x. Again, we have to cross multiply. Put 16 over 1. So we have 200 equals 16x. We divide by 16. That gives us 12 and a half or 12.5 for our x. Did we find the right thing? Yes, we did because it says find x. Now for number six, it's a little bit different. It states that the length of the violin string varies inversely, varies inversely as the frequency of its vibrations. Well, now we have to set it up. We know it looks something like this. It says the length of the violin, violin string. Well, violin string, I'm gonna say that the violin equals, and now it says inversely, so I'm going to put K on top because that's our inverse variation and I'm going to put that over the frequency of its vibration so I'm going to put k over k over the frequency here and now that you set up your inverse variation equation we can just plug in everything that we have so let's go ahead and do that it says a violin string is 10 inches long and vibrates at a frequency of 512 cycles per second. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have 10 inches long. We do not know what our K is, but we do know that our frequency is 512. Let's go ahead and solve for K. How do we do that? We cross multiply here. So it's K equals 5,120. Now, we're going to use this k and set up our equation. I have the violin 
equals, my k is now 5,120. That's going to go over my frequency. Let's go ahead and plug in what else we have. Now it says find the frequency of an 8-inch violin string. Well, where are we going to put this 8-inch? We're going to put it in for violin, so it's going to be 8 equals 5120, and I'm just going to let F be frequency. Again, we cross multiply, so now it's 8F equals 5120. We divide by 8 on both sides, so our frequency now is 640 cycles per second. One more, now we're going to combine some variations. Here we have F varies directly as G. How do we write direct variation? We go F varies directly, so I'm going to put K times G, but we have F also varies inversely as H, so I'm going to put this K over G all over H. Now here is my new equation that we have to use. The first thing we do is find K. So here it says find G. Well, we can't find K and G at the same time, so now we have to go all the way over here. We have to use this because it's after the if. Always look for your if if you're in doubt. So let's plug things in. F is 6, so it's going to be 6 equals. We do not know what our K is. Our G is right here, so it's times 2, and that's going to go over my H is 3. Let's cross multiply here. We have 18 equals k times 2 divide by 2, so k equals 9. So now we know what our k is, so now we are ready for finding g. Using the same equation here, f equals just with k, so now it's 9 times g over h. We are finding G. We plug in 6 for F, so it's 6 equals 9 times. We do not know what G is. We do know that H is a negative 6. So we, again, cross multiply. 6 times negative 6 is a negative 36. That equals 9 times G. We divide by 9, so it's negative 4 equals G. So we found our G. And that does it for section 8.5, Variation Functions. Good day.